Hello and welcome to a Ravnica Allegiance draft. I'm starting in the Intermediate Draft League, just so I can guarantee that even if we lose round one, you guys will at least be able to see all of the rounds. And wow, there's a lot of good cards here. So what do you do? Return a creature card with CMC three or less from your graveyard and double your life total, target opponent loses half their life, round it up. That seems not great. Both cards are only particularly good in the late game. And I don't know, Revenge just seems kind of win more. Gatebreaker Ram, played with this card in Sealed. This card is insane, very, very powerful. Can easily become like a three mana, five, five, six, six, no problem. Sphinx of the Guild Pact is colorless. Um, seven mana, five, five flyer is really powerful and it's super hard to remove, but seven mana is a lot. Um, the problem I'm seeing here is that I kind of want to try the Gates deck. Let's see what other, uh, Good cards there are before I do this. Whenever it becomes blocked, I think I'm gonna take Gatebreaker Ram here over the Sneak and the Sphinx. I think the Ram is great, and green is a better color to be in for the Gates deck than blue. Although, okay, so this is a one mana one one that becomes a two two, and it loots. That seems not the best. Code of Constraint seems good. And Gateway Sneak seems even better. If we're trying to draft the Gates deck, um, I think taking the uncommon payoffs is the way to do it. Um, unfortunately, we're passing a Simic Guild Gate here, but take Gateway Sneak this pack. We have two really good cards that want Gates, and then we can just kind of take the sweetest cards from other packs and see what happens here. But we are passing a lot of good blue, so that is something to be aware of. Okay. Um, Scribbling Claws is not for <laughs> limited, I don't think. Probably here we're going to take the Azorius Guildgate over Azorius Knight Arbiter, the 2 5 unblockable Vigilance. Seems good. And Sentinel's Mark Flash, Enchanted Creature gets plus one plus two and has Vigilance. And then they gave it. Wait, that seems backwards. Shouldn't it be. I feel like the Flash should give it Lifelink, and then if you play it on your main phase, it gains Vigilance because. I don't know. That seems weird. <laughs> but. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna take the guild gate here. We're gonna need quite a few of these anyway. Um, okay, Scuttle Gator is a six mana, six six defender that becomes a nine nine and can attack, seems good. Junk Troller, not really down for that. Uh, Bring to Trial seems good, a great way to deal with really powerful creatures. I mean, it kind of destroys the Gatebreaker Ram, right? Uh, Civic Stalwart, also good if you wanna be aggressive. I kind of want to take gates here and then just kind of see what's open after we get enough gates. Rampage of the Clans. Destroy all artifacts and enchantments. No, that seems pretty bad in this format too. There's a 4 mana 3 4 beast. Uh, Resolute Watchdog is really good. A 1 mana 1 3 defender that can kill stuff I like a lot. And there's a Justicar's Portal as well. Um, I think that card is very powerful. Two. There's also Gruel Guild Gate. <laughs> Maybe we just take the gates and force people out of that archetype. And then we can play whatever we want. <laughs> okay, Basilica Bell Haunt. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card and you gain three life. Hmm. I mean, that's a good card. This is a four mana two three drain your opponent for two. Um, I think in the gates deck we want to stay near Teamer um, or Bant. So I don't know if Rakdos Guildgate is necessarily where we want to be. Put a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control and untap it. That is a nice combat trick as well. Like I don't know how castable this card is. I don't think I can take it. I'll, I'm just gonna take one more gate. <laughs> Maybe we'll have some playables pack three. Okay, Rakdos seems open. Um, Drill Bit, Burning Tree Vandal's good. Crocodile's really nice. Um, Debtor's Transport's great. Some Lockets. Wow, these all these cards are great. Rakdos is super open. So I guess I'm glad I picked up the Rakdos Guildgate. Um, this card's the best if we want to be aggressive. The biggest issue here is it's difficult to be aggressive in a deck that has so many gates, right? Um, we could just take the five mana three seven and just survive forever. I'm gonna try a more controlling gates deck. 
Oh, wow. Night of the Last Breath. I definitely want that, I think. That card's huge. Seven mana, four, four. Afterlife, three. I guess, let's see. Wall of Lost Thoughts. Oh, the mill deck is real, huh? <laughs> That's interesting. Two mana, O4 oh, Defender. I don't think I'm there for that. Yeah, let's try the knight. It is really, really big. Oh, wow. Blade Juggler is nice. That's a very good card. Okay, so... We might even just do away with these. I don't know. Racto seems absurdly open. Yeah, let's take a Blade Juggler. And then, wow. Noxious Grudian, Simic Guildgate, Rubble Belt, Recluse, All Wield. I think about the Noxious Grudian. This card is very good. A 3 mana 2 2 Death Touch. I like how much we stayed open. I mean, black is just so open right now. Um, okay. We got Prying Eyes, Knight of Sorrows. I don't think I want Angelic Exaltation. Um, Azorius Locket seems a bit sketchy for draft. So I guess I'm going to take the Knight. It does keep us alive, and it helps with the afterlife theme, but our curve is super top end. We have no two drops right now. Mm, okay, so really Caretaker helps with surviving. Right, it's a 1 minute 03 defender that can give us mana, or there's a shimmer of possibility. I don't think I'm going to be junk trollering. I'm going to take the Caretaker here. Wow, the Watchdog came around? Isn't this card good? I guess we have two defenders. Dead Revels also seems nice, but I need some early play so I don't just die. And 10th District Veteran. And tap target creature control. I honestly think I want Arakdos Locket a bit more here. I'm not sure I'm going to play this, but we're looking to be probably controlling Rakdos or Esper, right? We have. I like Gateway Sneak more than Gatebreaker Ram with our current configuration because it's pretty hard to cast. Whoa, Drill Bit. The card's not that bad. Thought Season Limited? Um, yeah, I don't know. Gatebreaker Ram's hard to cast with our current mana configuration, and green doesn't seem super open. So I don't know if we're getting there on these guys. I guess I'll they'll move to the sideboard for now. Oh. Okay, there's a Blood Crypt. <laughs> That's a good card. Um, combined Guild Mage. Each creature control enters with a plus one plus one counter. That card is very powerful as well. I think Senate Guild Mage might be better. It's much cheaper, that's for sure. And we do have two Azorius Guild Gates. Um, Sphinx is inside. I love. <laughs> I'm a sucker for some value. We could just take a bunch of these, but I think the Guild Mage is better because we can loot every turn, whereas this doesn't necessarily do that. And if we want black, there's a Noxious Grudian or a bad Twilight Panther. I don't think it's Blood Crypt here. We don't have any real reason to do that, and it's not even a gate, so <laughs> what even are you? Yeah, this card's impossible to cast, and we don't have much ability to activate this. So my hierarchy of cards is... Oh, also Orzhov Guildgate helps a lot, but I think Senate Guild Mage is good enough to take here. What do you do? When it attacks, you may sacrifice a creature, and it gains unblockable. That actually doesn't seem that good, I'm going to be honest. 3 mana, 3, 1. I guess if you have a lot of afterlife, this can just like kill them from nowhere. But I'm not that excited about it, to be honest. Um, we could take... Right now it's looking like we're Esper, but again, it's hard to tell. Rakdos Firewheeler is really powerful, but it's double red. 2 damage to a player and 2 damage to a creature. Clan Guild Mage is green. I don't think we're in green. So we can take a Restored Zeal or maybe a Fairy Duelist. This card is really nice. Um, I like this a lot. I think it's between these three. And I'm not really sure. We have Gruul Guildgate, Rakdos Guildgate, Rakdos Locket. We know for sure we're going to be black. I think I'm going to take a, a gamble and take the uncastable card. Oh no. <laughs> and then we get this thing. Oh wait, what is this? Wow, that's insane. That's just passivism, but even better. I like that a lot. 
I mean, five mana draw three instant is good. We did just take a Rakdos Fire Wheeler though. So I don't know how castable it's going to be. Hmm. In sealed, this card seems amazing. In draft, I'm less convinced. I almost think I need to take the removal here. Draw three instant is great. And we do have a lot of defenders. So we're, <laughs> we're Esper Mardu. Perfectly reasonable set of colors to be. Uh, fine, I'll, I'll try out the rare in draft. Oh, wow. Okay, so I think now I probably got to take... What do you do? Create a 1-1 human? It's got a lot of booty. Ors of Enforcer is probably what we need. This card helps you stay alive, so nice. We might be able to wheel the Archway Angel. Um, six man is not necessarily what we want to be spending, but it will gain us a ton of life. But we need some early game plays that don't kill us. <laughs> and that is one of them. So we can take another Azorius Guildgate. Uh, we can take, what do you do? Two mana, one, three menace that can pump itself. That's pretty good too. I think we probably got to take the gate here. Over thought collapse. Yeah, just better mana. Just a card's portal. Ooh, Sphinx's Insight. Hmm. Or Arrestor's Admonition. We might need this one to stay alive. I love Sphinx's Insight so much, but we we need some kind of interaction here. Okay, there's another Gilgate. Wow, that is a late Law Mages binding. Okay. Azorius is open this direction. So Taking Rakdos Firewheeler, not the best decision I've ever made. But we could take a Rakdos Guildgate here. I don't think these are good. I love Growth Spile, but we're not in green. Portal's good, but... The Guildgate does help with the Firewheeler. I want a few more gate payoffs. Right now I just have the Sneak. And that's not enough to merit playing this many gates. You know, I kind of just want to take another Noxious Grudian. The Death Touch is super obnoxious. Although we could take a Twilight Panther. This card costs one. But you have to use one mana to give it Death Touch every turn, whereas this costs three. The biggest issue I see is us dying before this really gets online. I don't know what's better. I'm gonna take this just to diversify our casting costs. Ooh, bring to trial. I like a bring to trial. So now we have Law Mage's Binding. Some nice removal. We have a lot of card draw. <laughs> I actually like Humongulus as well, but I think this card is better. At least as a sideboard, but probably in a main deck as well. And we get another pack, I think. So we're probably not doing this. We could just be a nice Esper deck here with three Azorius Guildgates. Uh, one, two, three. I have no Forbes. Five, seven. Look at this curve, man. Can you beat this curve? Uh, wow, that is a late Senate Messenger. I think I'm going to be taking that over a Rester Zeal. This deck doesn't look like it's going to be super aggressive. I also think Light of the Stage could be good, but 2-3 flying that makes a 1-1 one, one flying is great. Wow, we got a Sphinx's Insight. Okay. Well, now our curve is perfect, and our card advantage is perfect. It's weird that Black was so open in the last... Um, hang on. When it enters the battlefield, pump it, dude, shuffle your library. Uh, I don't think I'm playing his out of officer, so if the mill deck is real, <laughs> I can sideboard against it. Um, anyway, it's weird that black was so open pack one, and now Azorius seems so open pack two. Wow, okay. I guess I need to... I'm trying to make the cards big so you guys can see them. I guess the, the cards we've already taken are less important, so we can do this and then make these bigger. Um, so we have Absorb. Counter target spell gain 3 is a great card, but honestly I think Long Mage's Binding is actually just better. Um, flash, Enchant Creature can't attack or block and activate abilities. Basically it's 3 mana kill a dude. And most of the things are going to want to be countering and limited. Our creatures so with absorb you have to hold the mana up 
which isn't necessarily what we want to be doing. This deck seems like it's going to be tapping out a lot, whereas Law Mage's Binding allows you to come back from behind. Um, also, Final Payment seems good. Brudian, Gilgate, but got to take another Law Mage's Binding. Ooh, another Gateway Sneak? Don't mind if I do. Oh, and there's a Spirit of the Spires, too. Four mana, two, four flyer. No, I think it's Gateway Sneak. This card blocks pretty well, but it also attacks really nicely. Um, I guess now we're probably playing these guild gates. Oh, what's that? A gate colossus? Eight mana costs one less to cast for each gate you control, and you can get it back. Well, if that's not a finisher, I don't know what is. I could also take an Orzhov guild gate, but I don't think gate colossus is going to wheel. And it's really good. It's an 8 8, it just kills them. <clears throat> I do like Summary Judgment too, but let's take the Colossus. We're just trying out all the cool cards. Mm. Foreboding Spirit can definitely keep us alive. I think I like that card a lot. 3 mana 3 3 is already a good rate, and preventing your opponents from attacking is not bad. Maybe you can wheel a Sphinx's Insight. So what are we going to cut now? Probably this is not good. Uh, I'm not so sure if we're going to be Rakdos Locketing. And maybe Drill Bit. And Night of the Last Breath is a bit expensive. I'd like to replace it if possible. Okay. There's another Gatebreaker Ram. Jeez. Uh, not sold on Blood Mist Infiltrator. Terramander could be good in this deck, surprisingly. We have one, <laughs> never mind, two, three, four, <laughs> only four total spells. I mean, I'm not playing this, and I already have Rakdos Locket. I guess Azorius Locket is a little bit better, but I don't necessarily want to be playing the Lockets. All right, I'll try out a Terramander. Wrecking Beast is just huge. Could take a Simic Guildgate. Um, we have two Sneaks, a Colossus, and potentially a Gatebreaker Ram. Could take a two drop as well. Or just an unkillable five mana guy. <laughs> I almost like the Senate Courier more than Humungulus because we don't have any combos with it really. This card's I think better in Simic where you can put counters on it and then just go off. This pack's not great for us. I'm gonna take the flyer. Ooh, what do you do? Create two Thopters, then you gain one life. I'm probably taking this. I mean, there's another Guildgate. Bring to trial, but this seems really nice. Tap a creature draw. Yeah, I'm gonna take that. Wow! That card's great too. Uh, for those who, wow, this whole pack, oh wow. Okay, so the colors we're in are super open. We just got all the good cards in the same pack. Like. This card exiles your opponent's best creature, you gain life. This card bounces a thing, you draw a card. This card kills a thing. This card counters a spell. Like, they're all insane. But I'm going to take the best one. We found the open lane, that is for sure. Uh, Guildgate helps with our mana. Do we have enough playables? We have 24. Am I going to play Sentinel's Mark? I don't think so. I think I'm going to take a Guildgate so I don't have to play these Rakdos Guildgates. Wow, this card wield? 2-4 four flyer for 4 is like really good. Um, there's also a 3-6 a that makes a 1-1 one, one for 6 mana. I think I like the 2-4. This blocks most things in the format. Screaming Shield. Nobody wants this. Okay, we got the portal. Uh, I don't know if that really combos with our deck. Um, if we see an opponent who has a lot of stuff like Law Mage's Binding, then maybe. But right now, right now I'm pretty happy with where this deck ended up. It's a little clunky, and our black man is not the best. There's an Orzhov Locket. Definitely better than Rakdos in this deck. I wish I had the one fairy, because we don't do anything until turn three. But that's what these gates are for. <laughs> And we got a lot of powerful 4 drops, 5 drops, <laughs> we do have a 7, 
7 mana 4-4, four, four, I don't know if that's where I'm down for. And then a drill bit if we see the need. This is 25. I think I'm cutting the knight. Uh, Gate Colossus is probably going to cost around 6 for us. I like the Grudy and I like the... Wait, can we just cut black? Or like barely splash black? I mean, a 3-7 Catacomb Crocodile is great. That blocks almost every card in the format. So I'm going to play that. Maybe I do cut these two cards just... Hey! Humunculus is really good too. 2-5 unkillable. Wait, can we just straight up cut black? What is what does this look like? This is 23 playables. So I don't think we want to fully cut black because consume is such a powerful effect that we at least want to be splashing it. And I think the death touch guys are pretty good too. But maybe maybe this is just how we run the deck. Um, Blade Juggler I know is a good card, but we don't really want to be dealing damage to ourselves, and if we don't pay the spectacle cost on it, like this deck is going to be behind almost all the time. So having to attack, damage the opponent, and then damage ourselves again just to get the value is probably not in our best interest. Uh, this gives plus O plus 3 and we can mill our opponents. <laughs> we could put that on like uh, one of our death touchers. How do they kill us? I don't think I'm going to play it. Oh my gosh, you have to pay two to mill them as well. Yeah, probably not doing that. Um, with double gateway sneaks. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a gate colossus. Is six guild gates too much? I mean, we're basically just playing tap lands most turns. I'm just trying to think if six is too many, because we really, really want to hit them on time. We probably want to play one turn one, and then we want to play one turn four, and then turn five and turn six. I think I do run six guild gates. Um, what does the rest of the mana look like? Four, four, and three. So that puts us up to five black sources for one, two, three, four spells. Um, and four, five, six, seven, eight white sources and eight blue sources. You know, that's actually not the worst thing I've ever seen. Um, the only thing we need double white for is this card. But we have eight ways to get there. Five swamps might be slightly too many. Let's sort by color so I can see it a little bit better. And this is a black spell and this is these. So we do want to play these early. I think five is too many. Um, let's run four of those. And an extra white, I think. Let's start by color again. We do have a lot more blue, but they're all three drops. Whereas white, we need double white. Um, two one drop white creatures as well. That's hard. <laughs> this is actually pretty hard. I think four black sources is probably enough for all of these. Mm, no, nah. We're going to run it as it was. Five is probably enough, just to mostly because we want these early so we don't just die. And this is a four as well. All right, see you guys round one. Hello and welcome to round one. We're on the draw. I think this hand's actually pretty good. Um, let's keep. We have all of our colors, although we do need to draw a blue or a white source to play Senate Guild Mage. And obviously we need to hit a few land drops here and there. And we draw an eight drop. <laughs> That's, uh, that's how it goes sometimes. But our opponent's blue. So that's good. 
Maybe maybe they're not particularly aggressive. Oh no. Incubation. Reveal a creature card and put it into your hand. What's the other side of this card? Why don't they show both sides? Like it should have this and then tell you what the other thing is, because like like I don't know, I guess maybe you should just know. Skatewing Spy, that's a good card. What does the other side do? Exile creature make a real lizard. Alright. Blue or white. Okay. I'll play two drop. And we kind of need to hit a land here. No. We got the watchdog though. All right, I mean, we're not gonna win. We're not gonna win like this. Bring to trial is a way to exile this, which is good. See, opponents hitting all their land drops, and they're not even playing any. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Yep, take two, land. E, we got the planes. Okay. Now everything's unlocked because we can send a guild mage, we can bring to trial this when they adapt. Uh, I want to keep this on defense to try and trade. Yeah, let's play the guild mage. And gaining two life is going to be super useful. Maybe I should have attacked because I could just block this guy with the watchdog. Sure. 3-4 flyer. Zori's Guild Gate. I like that a lot. Okay. So Gate Colossus costs six right now. <clears throat> so we can play the Guild Gate. We can play the Terramander just to get it in play. And I think I do attack with the Enforcer because we can just block here. So might as well get in some damage. Um, I imagine our opponent's just going to go land, adapt, and start swinging. That's our ideal turn of events. Okay, so now we can exile that. We take a bit of damage here, but they use their whole last two turns to do that. So that's fine, we take the damage. Um, we gain two life, and we can just gain life every turn. If we draw an untapped land here, that'd be very nice. And it's blue too, okay. Um, Crocodile doesn't do anything for us. We gotta exile this. Two, three. Oh, it only costs three? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> why, why is this untapped? MTGO, literally? Wait, 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 wait. I played a blue source. I tapped three and cast this for three. I thought it cost four. And now this is tapped, but I don't have the mana. All right, fair enough. Oh, okay, never mind. That's weird. <laughs> Undo my complaints. Not that I really have any. Let's hit for one, two. And we can Senate Guild Mage. And now the race is looking more favorable for us. And Gate Colossus, one, two, three, four, five. We can actually play next turn if we draw land. And it doesn't even matter if it's tapped or untapped. Although. I'd kind of like to save... Well, no, giving this indestructible doesn't really matter because we can play gates and bring it back. This deck's nice. Put on top, return to hand. So that goes on top. That gets bounced. I think I need to gain life here. The late game favors us so much. I could sack the hound so I don't draw it. 
How bad of a plane is that? They just have a 3 4. Hmm. This is interesting because we're basically trading the hound for whatever top card of our library is. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to do it. I don't want, I don't need him around anymore. And if we hit a land here, slamming Gate Colossus is a really powerful play. Or this, Foreboding Spirit into Senate Guild Mage. So now if they want to attack, they have to pay mana. I don't like this. Arcway Angel gain four. All right, well, the race is completely out of our control now. So they didn't get to attack. We still have not hit a land. Syndicate Messenger lets us chump for a while. We can hit for one. Because both of their flyers are three fours. I think I think we gotta loot away this crocodile right now. The angel seems really good. Four and three four. Hmm. Yeah, we can't even double block here. We can take six and fall to three. But that seems a little sketchy. I think I'm just gonna block. Trading cards for life. So don't play another flyer, holy cow. Our deck is very poorly matched up against all these flyers. So what do we even need here? Like a mass removal spell? I think I loot. Rakdos Guild Gate. So let's just play the Gate Colossus, but other than that, it doesn't do anything. But we're not going to play the Catacomb Crocodile either, so it's better than nothing. Oh, that's good. They have to exile one of their flyers and we gain a bunch of life. Target player, one, two, three, four. And how many creatures or spells do we have in our graveyard? One, two, so this now costs six, so we can just activate that next turn. All right. So we will be playing this guild gate then. And... I think I get in with the Orzov Enforcer. Um, both of these are flyers, and this can't attack profitably into either of these. Yeah. So we're back to gaining life off of this. This has been a grindy game so far. We need them to not have a gate. That would be nice. Okay. So we take five, gain three. But Terramander will lock up the sky unless they have the way I've bounced it. Or they have more flyers. Holy cow. Okay. Gain the life. Is it a land here? No, oh, it's a guild gate. Two, three, one, two, three. So we can activate this. We can't send it guild mage, but that's okay. So we just attack here. They have so many flyers in their deck, these Death Touchers do nothing. So I don't see a way around just going for it with the Terramander and blocking the 4-4. Four four. Holy cow, you have double Swirling Torrent? Uh, next turn we can play and activate this. Are we just dead though? 
Uh, we gain two, and then we take seven. No, 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 we don't have any flying blockers. Double swirling torrent? Jeez. And it's a, okay, we're dead. <laughs> it was a good series of draws. Okay, so against flyers, what do we have? Just of course, portal really helps us get around swirling torrent. I like drill bit. Uh, basically, none of these black creatures are worth it, aside from drill bit. So we can cut these swamps here. This card is still good, but we didn't see really any ground creatures. I guess we can run a blade juggler. That at least draws a card. Um, but we still need to make cuts. I guess probably Resolute Watchdog seems bad against them. Add some lands, one and one. So we have one, two, three, four black cards and three black sources. I think we need a black source as well. Actually, yeah, I really want to be able to drill bit on curve. And Blade Juggler seems fine. Not the best card ever. This can make 1-1 flyers. Yeah, we're gonna have a really hard time beating their deck just because of how many flyers they have. All right, see what we can do. Let's go first. Uh, Yeah, this hand's good. It's got all the things we need. We wanna save these for the late game. Making two flyers, gaining a bunch of life is really good. Let's see how they scryed. Put a card on top. Cheats. Okay. Oh wow, okay. That's good. Play this. This way we can play the guild mage and a gate. I guess there's no way we draw both, but you know what? It is what it is. Sages, Rose, Savant, sure. I don't want to ambush that with one of these. Two cards on bottom. I like that. Okay, this is good. So let's go for Boating Spirit. Just get it down and start beating down. I think Terramander is our secret to success. And we got to be careful when we see them at six mana because that card is so busted. Gateway Sneak, that's a good card too. So, let's go Planes, hit with both of them. Cool. I'm just gonna play the Sneak. Um, I think it's less mana efficient, but next turn we can Insight into a Gate, hopefully. And that draws three, and that's just super busted. <laughs> and if they don't have a blocker, then this gets there even better. Okay, Senate Griffin is fine. You know, I think I'm just gonna enchant the Senate Griffin and then swing in. They can chump the gateway sneak and take four, or let us draw cards. Where do they scry? Top, okay. So they're drawing a good card next turn. Yeah, let's just get rid of the Senate Griffin. Them having flyers is problematic for us. <laughs> Do you want to take damage? Let me draw a card or keep your two on. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. I think I keep the Gilgate around for next turn. This is a weird deck where you like intentionally skip your land drops sometimes. Chillbringer, okay. That's a little unfortunate. Oh, whoa, what? 
Okay. I'm good for that. We're just going to draw a million cards now. Play that. Can't be blocked. Hit and draw a card. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Although I don't really want to be bouncing the Chillbringer. I want to save that for offense, so let's just jam a 2-4 flyer. Opponent's at 9, and this card's so busted. <laughs> Yeah, we can save this to bounce them when it really matters. Um, we can Justicar's portal on defense. Oh gosh, you have the thing. Bounce put on top. It's so good. The nice part is, even if they tap out for that, they're still kind of behind. Because they either leave us with the Terramander, and a foreboding spirit. Like all these cards are relevant. Sure. <laughs> Makes sense. Rakdos Guildgate, let's do it. Swing with these. I'm fine trading the gateway sneak off. I think I'm okay trading here. Chillbringer is one of their better creatures. Ooh, another gateway sneak. I like that. And we can hold up Justicar's portal. <laughs> Let's draw a gate, please. <laughs> Just too many cards for our opponent to deal with. And once we start deploying these, our Terramander is going to become huge. Geyer Engineer, sure. Get a bunch of mana. Spirit of the Spires, also fine. So we can just bounce that even. So let's bounce your thing. Hope to draw a gate in particular. But they actually don't even have good blockers for our gateway sneaks anyway. Right, they can double chump, but that doesn't really get them there. Sure. We draw an island so we can just... Uh... Honestly, I'm just going to keep all my mana up. I don't know what's better, tapping their guy or making two 1-1s? One -ones? They're both so beautiful. Oh, they're going to be one twos. Wow, that's gross. All right, what do you got that's a million mana? Swirling Torrent. Put on top of library, return to hand. I think I'm going to adjust cards portal this. It's basically two mana draw a card to gain three mana on your next turn. And I don't mind. They should have done that the other way around, I think. Anyway, game three. Uh, we just have to hope to out tempo their flyers and run it back. Uh, this hand's pretty good. We got two gates, different arts. Um, we got a Terramander and a Senate Courier. So we kind of have the late game pretty covered. Maybe I should have went turn one Terramander. What is this? This is the two mana one one. Okay. Oh yes. Terramander, play an island here. Cause we wanna, we wanna get in with this boy. Take one, they can adapt. So no point in blocking. And it's just when it, I guess it is like a one man at two two kind of, and it's a Murfolk, which is relevant for constructed purposes. But the card does not seem that amazing. Wow, opponent has all gates. 
but we got to sneak. While I really regret playing that gate turn one now. <laughs> Hit for one, pass turn. So opponent showed nothing in the way of tricks. So if they attack, I should probably block. There is the common Simic combat trick though that gives plus one plus one and bounces a guy. Okay. Oh, that's good. He has flying now. And we drew <laughs> a lot of lands. Okay. Okay. This is not the best start I've ever had. At least this can block for a turn. We we need to basically draw no more lands. I mean, seven is a lot. Uh, or if we do draw lands, they have to be gates. It's basically what it comes down to. Take two. No attacks. What? Gates. Oh, that's really good, actually. I like Bring to Trial a lot. Because we can exile this when it, they... How much does this cost? Uh, it costs six. We need one more land? Okay. And no attacks. Mm-hmm. I like that this has hexproof, so they can't bounce it. We're basically just sitting around waiting for them to pump this. How do they scry? That's scary. One bottom, one top, okay. Feels like they're looking for a six land to play their big spell. Hmm. So we have a few options. We could just jam a Gate Colossus. That leaves us pretty susceptible to their uh, bounce plus put on top shenanigans. But I imagine they want to pump this first. Like, bouncing their things right now doesn't do that much. They could have a counter spell. That is one option. But I think I'm just going to jam the Colossus here. I think this is our probably our best route to victory. And none of their creatures can block it. <laughs> oh, all right. It gets exiled, but we get a 3-3. That's not the worst. And a Senate Griffin, sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they should be attacking with flyers. I don't know why they're not. I thought I took that out of the deck. Okay, I kind of want to bounce something. Because if we play this this turn, then we can Terramander evolve. And we can draw a gate right now. Which would be really good. Also, we have no black sources. Uh, I think this one. It's four mana. It's pretty expensive. Oh, that's pretty good too. Um, because now we have good attacks with our three three. Uh, the two five can just be blocked by the two three, but we can at least get in with this. Okay. And then we can play another Twilight Panther. It's just a really bad one two. And then Foreboding Spirit here. So we can't really be attacked. This is gonna become a five five. If they level this up, we can exile it. And our ground beats are looking more promising. And a guild gate, nice. Okay. Play gate, you gain unblockable. 
Um, we can attack with the Terramander as a 5-5. Five five. That plays into their game plan of bouncing our creatures, right? They can double bounce our flyers and then we take... I guess we only take 5. And we can hit for a good amount right now. And this costs 7, right? And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. I think we might be attacking here. Swing, swing, swing. 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 That's a lot of damage. Are they chumping the Terramander right now? Okay. Uh, so we can... How much damage do they take? 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 9. That puts them down to 8 life. And we have a 5-5, five, five. so even if they tap out for 6 next turn, yeah, this seems nice. And we get to draw a card. Okay. So they like have to bounce this, otherwise they're just dead. And even if they do, we can just do it again. They could try and adapt two and then double block. That is one option, I guess. But if we can find a way to kill this, then they're very dead. They have no flyers left. They have five cards in hand, so that's important to note. There's an airplane going above me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Our opponent's doing a thing. I imagine this is... Oh. Three mana, three, four gain, six life. That's good. It's actually really good there. The, th the four toughness is especially critical. Gate. Swamp. Well, a swamp lets us at least attack here. Problem is now our Terramander doesn't even attack very well. All right, let's get in with Twilight Panther. <laughs> we can trade it for their Sage's Rose Savant, I guess. But that's fine. Snap block. Yep. All right. Archangel is a good card. Where's our five mana draw three? Can we get that in play? <clears throat> the problem is they're just going to keep putting cards on top of our library now, and we're never going to get a draw step. What's going on, opponent? I just want them to adapt. Please adapt your skate wing spy. That would make my life. It's such a bad play though. Like there's no way they actually do that. At least currently. Okay. Eat. That was a bad draw. That was a really bad draw. Um Yeah, I mean we have no good attacks. But neither does the opponent. They don't have... They have not shown a permanent way to deal with the Terramander yet. Guard Engineer, sure. Wow. Alright, play land and pass. We're flooding hard. How much is this? 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Alright. 6 lands left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I don't know, opponent has five cards in hand. What, like, what could they have? Maybe they're holding a bunch of lands. Seems odd when you have like adapt cards, but you never know. I don't know what's happening here, but we're getting a second chance at life. Spirit of the Spires is nice. Making everything big. 
Still a 5-6 attacks pretty poorly. I don't know how this game is going to end. So they adapt. Nice, okay, so we can exile that and they lose two flyers. And this sends our guys, oh, Chillbringer. Tapping the Terramander, I assume? Yep. Okay, so if they have a combat trick here, they haven't shown any yet, so I don't think it makes sense to play around any. Yeah, I think we're just going to block as if they don't have much. If they had a trick, they would have not tapped the Terramander because they could have just killed it. We can actually... No, we can't kill it, but there's no reason for them to attack with that. Okay. Oh, that's good. So... Let's exile this. And we can exile another one of their big flyers with this. Or do we wait? Does this actually do much for us right now? Like I can't... So we play this, they can exile probably Chillbringer. And they still have five power flyers. I think I wait and hope they get a little greedier. And we don't have any good attacks, so... But neither do they. It's important to note. Yeah, I want them to like put counters on one of these in an effort to beat the Terramander. Swirling Torrent. Bounce this, put on top. Okay. That happens. They still have good attacks though. That is a time walk for us, but it could be much, much worse. 3 5 and 3 4. Okay, we take 3. Yep. So, play the Terramander. How much does this cost? We have one, two, so this costs six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can actually play Slayer of the Spire or Spirit of the Spires here and still activate Terramander. And do I have any good attacks? No, because they can block the well let's see, we can attack with the three three and the two five. And that can get in for damage, I think. But they can just kill the 3-3. No, we don't have good attacks. But we have a lot of good draws. We have so much removal. We have a 5-mana draw 5. Like, or draw 3. So our top decks are way better than what I assume we see from them. This card is great. But... Uh, when you already are in like a bad board position, it doesn't really win board stalls. And it doesn't deal with the problems because we just redraw them. So like, they traded one card for one of our card, and six mana for... We have to pay more, but at this point, mana's kind of a... You got a lot of it, you know? Five... Mana... Just play another one? Warden. Wow, what is the other side of that? Opponent has literally all of the flyers. <laughs> They're being held off with one Terramander. Adapt you. I think that is a good target to hit with consume. Huh? They're exiling Seraph with the scales, that's interesting. Oh, that's a good card. Um so let's consume them. Three, four. So they exile their Sphinx. And we still have not drawn a gate here. <laughs> um, I don't have good attacks, so pass turn. I 
I think this is going to be a nice combat trick to gain life when they don't expect it. Gate? Oh, that's good. Um, again, we don't really need to play that right now. Uh, yeah, Terramander still does not have good attacks. We need like two Law Mages bindings. Does this target only opponent? No. So I kind of wanted them to use both of those before we play this. Shark to Crab. Okay. Yep, just waiting here. Oh gosh, we got two. Okay. Now we can start taking down their flyers. Shark to Crab taps down Terramander, I assume. I guess we'll see what they target. Sure. Okay, so no point in doing anything just yet. I really want them to use their other copy of this before I use this. Because these cards are pretty much dead for them. Windstorm Drake. Yep. That's a good card. Are they going to go all in? They have one card left. If it's the bounce, they go for like an all out combat swing. Uh, we play this and then start Law Mages binding things. And that's easily how we come back into this game. No, this does look like it. Please be it. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm surprised from my, or I'm happy for my opponent to play a bomb. Oh, I should have played that. I should have played this while the creatures were in play, but that's okay. And I should have done this pre-combat. We're taking a bunch of extra damage for no reason. That's okay though. Um, this is eight damage. Okay. I'll block here. Yep, that was kind of goofy, but let's. Well, let me just binding the four five flyer. Yeah, I should not have taken any damage there. Four five and the four four. Combat deploy makes up thopters. Yeah, terrible sequencing. <laughs> but we're fine. We could just go Terramander. Um, one, two, three. I think we can do both. And we don't have any good attacks. We're at four minutes left, so we gotta play a little quickly, but again, the rest of our deck is full of good draws. We got like four more gates to hit with Gateway Sneak. Guild Mage, that's good too. Play you. So they have a 3 4 flyer and a 3 4 flyer. We have a 5 5. <sighs> this game will never end. They duck first. Um, yeah, I mean, we could probably deck them here. Gain a life. Hmm, I almost don't want to play this. Because I don't know if I can win in time. Yep. I don't think they can win though. I mean, they get the best card in the top four. Game two. I'll play this, but <laughs> the bottom of our deck is going to be all of our gates, and not drawing gates actually saved us. I don't think there's like a mass tap all creature spell or anything. Yep. 
All right, so if they don't play anything busted this turn, we win because they looked at the top four and then the top two. Uh, I guess it could be literally the last card. So next turn, if they don't play anything busted, we win. And I don't have any effects. Guildgate. No swings. This is how Azorius wins, guys. Yep, you got that. Gain two life. Wow, the bottom of our deck was stacked. Yep, get a thing. Maybe I should have brought in that shield. That shield would have won the game. Three minutes left. Gain some life. F6. Put a land. Go. Yep. Do that. F6. Not going to play that. <laughs> I think I just don't want to cast any spells because they could have the counter spell I mill three. Attacking with a five four. Um, we could just chump. Yep. Gain a bunch of life. And they've already seen all these cards, so. I'm not even going to play this guild gate. It just takes up time off my clock. <laughs> Opponent, why don't you scoop? Um, I guess we might as well block here now. Or Zob Enforcer, that's a good one. Well, we both get to see each other's complete deck lists. Oh, I probably should not have cast Or Zob Enforcer. Mm -hmm. uh, we can kill this one. And then just take the rest. Very duelist, sure. Game life. Oh, that's a good card too. All right, uh, go. <laughs> Last card in library for opponent. Can you kill me this turn? Wait, they just die. <laughs> All right. Uh, they attack with everything. All right, making me block. Block here, block here, block here, um, block here. This blocks the biggest threat, which is this one. This jumps here. All of those are blocked. Okay, gain some. No! Those are our blockers. Gain some life. Good to go. Get a flyer, get a flyer, and they die! That's how you win! I don't know why opponent didn't just scoop, but we played it out. We, uh, we decked him. <laughs> See you guys in round two. That was brutal. Alright, here for round two. Let's go first against Dim12. Oh yeah, this hand's great. Let's hope this opponent doesn't have as many flyers. The last opponent had so many, and all these cards were pretty bad. But let's lead on the Gilgate. And Death Touchers plus Indestructible is pretty sick. We can basically trade Resolute Watchdog for any ground creature we want to, which is super nice. 
Humongulus. I like that boy. Next turn we can play the Watchdog plus the Guildgate and then play a 1-4 Flyer. It's going to be pretty nice. And opponent appears to be on Rakdos. Doing nothing, okay. We're going to play Watchdog pre-combat. That kind of forces their hand. Oh, we can play the Guild Mage next turn. Okay, Wait for one. And I will trade Watchdog for like a random burn spell here because this creature is super useful. Um, the real question is do we want to run out the Guild Mage or one of the three drops? Huh. I guess Guild Mage plus Indestructible is pretty nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess we'll attack first. Opponent doing nothing on turn three is suspect. Okay, white, blue, guild mage. With the pupper to keep him around. Is this gonna be exile, send and guild mage? Oh, you know what? Maybe I should have played the Grudian because of the exile spell being on three. Yeah. It's okay. That's kind of part of playing the format. You you learn the tricks. Like this is my first time playing draft, so haven't really played against that card. Seems really good though. Um Alright opponent. <laughs> Just doing nothing over there. For one. I think I want to get the flyer down. I mean, Noxious Grudian hits harder, but if they play any big ground dude, then we can't use this at all. Whereas this can at least get in for chip damage, and if they play a big ground dude, then Enforcer can block. Ah, okay. Oh, Enforcer cannot block. <laughs> That's a really good card. We have one of those. We took it over a fairy, but now we get to attack in the air. And if we hit a land, oh, humongulus, get in there. Wait for two in the air. And these flyers are kind of a real problem for the opponent. I'm saving bring to trial for something scarier because right now this can't even attack through this. Wow, opponent's fully Mardu. Okay. Five mana. Oof. Okay, that's a problem. Don't have much to beat. <laughs> this deck is just bad against flyers. Oh, that's a good one. Yep, play the Foreboding Spirit, I guess. I mean, I don't have any good attacks anyway. Last turn. Yep. So let's hope they like somehow equip this or something. But mostly we'll save this for their bombs. Their opponent's playing white, so I imagine they're splashing for more than just a grasping thrall. Blade Juggler. Yep, that's a good card. Still can't attack though. Planes. Does not do that much. Alright, <laughs> are we gonna just like stall out and deck all of our opponents here? I thought our late game was good enough, but our last opponent exiled the Colossus with a bring to trial, I think. Huh. Rectos lock it, sure. I might actually side in a locket in this matchup just for the uh, card draw. Holy cow. All right, our opponent is really controlling. Double rack does lock it. Okay, well, never mind. We're fine. One, two, three, four, five. Scry three, draw two, draw three. 
Um, we don't really need lands. And this is a good card. There we go. Go ahead. Um, I mean, make two 1-1s one gain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 life is pretty good. Especially with Spirit of the Spires giving them more toughness. Oh, two, three. Let's play the sneak. And I kind of want to hold up Indestructible for this guy because he's going to basically bring this matchup wide open. You know, I guess maybe I should be attacking with this. Mm, no, it just trades for Blade Jugger, which is such a low impact card at this point in the game. And then we're going to do this end of turn and then play this spirit. Assuming the opponent doesn't do anything crazy. Yep, move to attacks. Alright. Um, I'll just block here. Uh, actually there's a lot of one damage effects. I'm gonna block here. I'm gonna do this before... Yeah, I'm gonna do this now. Because there's so many ways to deal one damage. I think our opponent wanted to trigger the discard spell. The discard demon. Oh, never mind. Okay. Deploy makes the thopters here. All right, no burn spell from the opponent. That's good. So let's start with guild gate. Hit for one, draw a card. <laughs> And this dog is so good. Like, what, is, what does our opponent do now? <laughs> they can't kill our best creature. Yep. Draw a card. Ooh, the crocodile. I want to play the flyer first. Um, pumping our whole team is pretty huge in case they play some effect that is like minus one, minus one. None of these cards are good. Um, I guess we play the bird. And pass turn. At some point we're just going to go so wide that we beat our opponent. Although, let's see, they crack two lockets, they fall to 18. We are still technically ahead on cards. Or... We're behind on cards, but we're ahead on cards in deck once they crack this locket. This is uh, the full-on shields up. <laughs> if we draw the Colossus at the right time, then that should just open the game. This deck does not have many ways to win the game, even though we're so far ahead. Twilight Panther, now we're talking. Uh, guess we could start getting in there with a 3-7 crocodile. Oh, I should have played that. Oh, well. What is this much mana at instant speed? Uh, I don't like this, whatever it is. Oh, thank goodness. They don't, no, they... Oh. Then it deals two damage to each other creature that player controls. Oh, we could have exiled that so long ago. Well, now we'll know that matters. Um, so that's going to kill you and these. I think I want to keep that around. I guess I knew what I was doing when I was playing around uh, when I didn't play Twilight Panther. Uh, 
That's brutal, though. Such a good card. You have more? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Destroy that. All right. Now we'll draw our good cards. Grasping Thrall, yep. We still have the air locked up, and Humungulus blocks so well on the ground. Oh, that's good. Um, I don't really want to bounce any of their things. <laughs> Do I have a creature with a good end of the battlefield effect? Not really. I guess I'll play Twilight Panther. I kind of want to save this as a way to protect ourselves against removal. Because we're not getting any value by using it now. All their creatures are bigger than ours. But if they play like, let's say we play the Colossus, right? He costs four. Then we can hold this up to protect it. An opponent's flooding way harder than we are. Destroy target creature. So here's an exact example. Um, so if this dies, we have a 2-3 flyer and a 1-4 flyer, and they can start getting it in the air. So let's bounce it. It's interesting that they paid life rather than sacking the 2-1. That seems like a big mistake. Because this card is doing nothing. We have a 2-5 hexproof. And they could even get a 1-1 flyer. Oh. Everyone's playing that card today. We're at 10, they're at 24. It's not too bad. Three three two three three three. This seems unadvisable. Like here and here, and we take. I guess they get in for three damage this way. Yeah, I mean we're at seven. Okay, that's a good card. One, two three four. We're kind of just dying. <laughs> There's not much else to it. Mm -hmm. That's going to get in for a lot of damage. Uh, so we kind of want to save these guild gates in hand so that if we draw the Colossus, we can reshuffle it. I almost want to prevent this from activating abilities. Oh, I know what I can do. I can let them attack first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can let them attack. And then we can put this on, and then they activate the ability. So we basically force them to sack a creature to do two damage. Uh, sure. Card doesn't do much. And a 2 2 Death Toucher. Okay, we can trade for that. So let's flash down on you. I'm assuming they know, you know, that they can just keep attacking and kill us eventually. All right, let's hit some good stuff. Island. That we can play. Yep, this deck, uh, <laughs> typical Azorius fashion, will win by just sitting here.
<laughs> yeah, the 2-2 two -two makes our Colossus much worse. I guess the question now is, can we outlast every card in their deck? 2-2 two -two Death Touch. So we do have to trade here. Um, we have, I guess we already traded off both of our Death Touchers. This is kind of rough. I think I actually have to block with this. Death Touch v Death Touch. Although, actually no, this dying is good for us because we can play the Colossus. And it won't die. Also we have the 5-5 five, five flyer. This one. That's a big boy. Go ahead. <laughs> and it's gonna be a five, six flyer. So right now they have one, two, three flyers. So if we can actually, uh, where is it? If we get another Law Mage's Binding and put it on the Grasping Thrall, we can actually start attacking in the air with the Terramander. What is this? Turn creature. Get a 2 2 Death Touch. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Is that lethal? Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blockers, and they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine attackers. So we have to take at least four damage. All right, let's adapt. Okay. Let's set blocks. So crocodile blocks there. The one five flyer blocks here. Two four flyer. All those guys are big. Um, that is a death toucher, so that's kind of problematic. But I think we do have to block it. Three three can trade with the two one. This five six, hang on. This can kill this. If they have a team pump, then we're super dead. And we're just not beating that. Uh, this gives minus one, minus one, right? Okay. As it currently stands, we're taking six, and they lose their whole board. It's possible opponent has a one damage spell, though. So maybe we do this. Let them keep their flyer, but then we take way less damage because this is good for us, this is good for us, this is good for us, this is fine, this is just fine, this is fine, and this is good. All right, we might be dead, or we might just win the game here. An opponent got impatient. If they have a three, three damage burn spell, then we are in fact dead. Yep, that's what it looks like. Darn. Good work. Good work, opponent. I'm trying to think if there was a time when I could have saved more life. That was such a risky play by them. I'm not saying it was wrong. I'm just saying it was risky. Um, I like Justicar's portal against their removal. Drill bit to deal with their big things. Uh, Twilight Panther seems... A little bit suspect <laughs> against this opponent and honestly screaming shield might be necessary as a win condition in this deck but we'll see how that goes round three or game three because we got to win game two first and we have enough win conditions right we even get to go first 
Maybe this is too much. I do like portal though. Um, we can just keep it up to protect against kill spells. Yeah, maybe the panther's bad. All right, running it. Go first. Oh, this hand is actually not that good. We have, I think, eight or nine white sources, or blue sources, I mean. I'm actually gonna mulligan this hand. Wow. All right, I mean, it has a gateway sneak, so we just need a blue source, not you. Start with Arachnos Guildgate. I think this hand is worth keeping. This this actually does things. The the other hand didn't do a whole lot. Blue. <laughs> Our mana's not even bad. This is just unfortunate. Plague right? Yep. We might just be dead. Nope, never mind, we win the game. All right, we gotta remember, we cannot block the Plague White. It does not work out well for us. Yep. Two one vigilance. Okay. Let's attack, I guess. Wow. All right, opponent uh, disconnected for a long time. They're down to five minutes, which is unfortunate for them. Good for us. I mean, if we do, if we win this game, I think we win the rounds. But we're not going to intentionally try to time them out because disconnecting is rough. Wow. Do they have a one the one damage to a creature and player? The plus one plus one at first strike. That would be sick. That'd be the longest slow roll of my life. Oh my god! <laughs> Chat, that was literally like a 12 minute slow roll just for me to learn that I'm going to lose the game. I know you guys saw I get cut because of editing, but my god. <sighs> Alright, we can still draw a land next turn and then be okay. That was the most brutal, the most brutal of plays though. Okay, we need to land here. Um, it's more important. Gaining two life. I think I just have to cycle this. We just need a land that's fundamentally... Okay, good. We got a shot now. We might be able to play the uh, Catacomb Crocodilia. And we're at 10. We need them to not have something busted here. Oh gosh. This is going to be one of the 3-3 three, three flyers. Yeah, we're probably dead. Okay. So... Playing this gains 4, we're playing this gains 3. And this costs three mana, so if we draw like a one of our one drops, maybe we can get there. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't want to block that. I don't want to give them more creatures. This becomes a one two, and they trade. Okay, I'll block here. If they have a trick, then we're dead anyway. Yeah, so trading gives them one more creature, but blocking here gives us one more creature. They have another thrall. Okay, blade juggler is tough. We're dead on board, aren't we? No, 
We got Foreboding Spirit. Opponent can swing one, two, three creatures. So this and this, we have to chump this way because we're missing the planes. Wait, Law Mage is binding on the 3-3. Three, three. We block Blade Juggler and we take exactly lethal. Yeah, that doesn't do it. Foreboding Spirit means they have to pay a bunch of mana. Or this, right, one, two, three. They can attack with this, this, and this. We chump, block, take two, fall to one. And they have these three. My god, this is going to be rough. All right, for voting spirit it is. We need them to have like nothing in hand. Like there's no way we're winning this. That storm strike was the best card of all time. If you have a grasping thrall just cast it, please. <laughs> oh no, they can't Oh, that's right, they can't cast it and attack. Okay, so they attack their block, block, these are forced blocks. If we draw a one mana blocker, or two mana blocker, Oh my gosh, we're so close. We're just missing the mana. We, we needed a white or a blue to be able to survive this turn. Yeah, and then Simic Guildmage. Oh, that would have been so good. Because right now we can chump, we can play this and give it first strike, but that doesn't do it. Yeah, and this doesn't work on their creatures. God, we were so close. One life away. If we stabilize this game, we win. Because, I mean, this is gone. They have a 1-1 one, one flyer, we have a 1-1 one, one flyer. These trade. We have a 3-7. Let's, maybe they forget to attack. Darn. <laughs> okay, we're dead. Good games, opponent. So you guys run 3. All right, we're here for round three. Opponents rocking the 41 card special, which means we cannot mill them out. So we gotta use traditional means to win these games. And we're gonna keep gates in hand in case we draw one of our two gate sneak people. Oh my, that's a good card. And we have a lot of lands. Go. I don't like this. Okay. Gate Colossus. All right, that's the reason to start playing gates. Finally, we get him early. This card does work. So we can get it down on turn six currently. Two, three, flying adept, sure. Um, let's play a swamp and attack and then play Spirit of the Spires.
sweet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. God, if we ever drew this card, it would be so sick in the other games. Five mana. Well, that's getting bounced. Goodbye. Oh, gateway sneak. Okay, we're we're gonna keep these gates in play then. And I can actually attack with the Twilight Panther. <laughs> when you spend that much mana to make a great token and it just gets bounced, it feels so bad. Sure, 2 5 unblockable. The card is surprisingly problematic for my deck, but fortunately, we have a lot of ways to gain life. Well, oh, that's a good card. Uh, I'm going to save that card. Play planes here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's both black. Doesn't matter really. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping they just make it a 4 or 7. That's probably their best route to victory. Yeah, okay. And now we're just going to exile it. Yeah, I'll take 4. Yep. Consume, target you, one, two, three, four. They sacrifice a bunch, we gain a bunch. Gateway sneak gains unblockable. This is just how we drew it up. This is what the deck should be doing. Swing in with you two. Ooh, Humungulus. We're gonna play the uh, Gate Colossus first though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this card's rough when you're behind. I guess that's just a much cheaper version of Adapt. They have a 3 4. Ooh, okay. Is there a skilled gate? Let's do the old Death Touch stuff. We know they won't block. 3 damage. That's fine. So they still take one and then we play the Colossus. One, two, three, four, five. And it's an eight, eight. And we could just tap this and swing in for eight, nine, 10, 11. Not bad. Don't tell me you have the exile make a three, three card. Okay, good. Oh, they got the mill strategy. <laughs> I don't know how well that's going to work. Oh, that's a good card too. I don't really want to use it just yet. I kind of want to just swing in with these two. They can chump here. Minus four, minus zero. Okay, so we're gonna do this now. Because now this can just block it. We have an eight power. I'm just gonna play this.
A good try by the opponent. Okay. So they're Simic stuff. They appear to be playing Nil, which is good against us in general. Um... Nah, let's just run it back. Deck is perfect. Oh yeah, this hand's good. Let's do it. Turn one Twilight Panther. Oh yes, okay. This is this is the perfect deck, guys. I love this deck. Don't do anything spooky. Yes, that card is fine. I will trade my Twilight Panther for it. Let's see how they scry. Double top, okay. That makes me think they're missing land drops. Yeah, let's go with Panther. And I'm going to play Guildgate because I really want to hit Gateway Sneak on turn 3. I know it's kind of weird to play a gate for a card that wants gates, but none of the other cards in our hand are castable, so we should uh, guarantee we can do things. Um, yeah, I want to stay alive. This hand has really good late game potential. Also, that's a weird attack if they have Simic Ascendancy, because they could have just made this a 3-2. But whatever. Senate Courier. That's really unfortunate. We don't have a gate. All right, I mean, Swamp or Zob Enforcer. We need a white or a blue source, which is... We have 17 lands and five of them are black. And three of those black ones are in play. So... What are the odds here? They're very high. Um, so we have one, two, three, four. So there are 13 lands and 11 of them are good hits. So every draw step is 11 and 29 to just get there. I'll take those odds. And opponent's gonna put a lot of counters on this courier, and then we're just gonna stop it from attacking. So that's good. What? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I don't think it's worth doing two damage to let me attack here. Oh! Uh. What? <laughs> so here's what was going through my head and what would have made sense with that play I should have played a plane because there's the card that is green put a plus one plus one counter on your creature and untap it so it's it's actually really fortunate they conceded because I, I definitely should have played a plane otherwise I don't think I could actually attack with gateway sneak because the the only way this play makes sense is I mean Opponent probably just forgot or just gave up, but I guess, guess we win. Weird games, guys. See you guys for next time.